Thank you. Thank you all for being here uh, this evening. Uh, tonight, we just listened to Donald Trump's third and what I believe will be his very last State of the Union address. And, and let me take this opportunity to briefly respond to what President Trump said, and equally important, to what he did not say, and what we must do together to create an economy and a government that works for all of us, not just the 1%. As, as all of you know, uh, tonight and on many other occasions, President Trump has told the American people that the economy today is booming like it has never boomed before. Well, in truth, for Trump and his billionaire friends, he is right. The economy is really booming for them. In fact, the wealthiest people in our country have never, ever had it so good. And we are now experiencing more income and wealth inequality than any time in the last 100 years. In America today, the three wealthiest people in our country own more wealth than the bottom half of American society. While at the same time, 500,000 Americans are homeless, including 30,000 veterans. In America today, the top 1% earn 49% of all new income, while half of our people are living paycheck to paycheck struggling to pay the rent, to put food on the table, to provide childcare for their kids, or even to go to the doctor. In America today, hundreds of thousands of bright young people cannot afford to go to college. Millions are struggling with outrageous levels of student debt, all the while, President Trump wants to make massive cuts to Pell Grants and other educational programs. And this is what Trump really means when he talks about a booming economy. This is what he really means. Since he has been in office, billionaires in America have seen their wealth increase by 800 and $54 billion, a 37% increase. In other words, the very, very, very rich are becoming even richer. Meanwhile, wages for the average American worker have gone up by all of 17 cents an hour over the past year after adjusting for inflation, an increase of less than 1%. Here is Trump's booming economy, a 37% increase in the wealth of billionaires, a 1% increase in real wages for American workers. And thanks to Trump, for the first time in the history of this country, this is quite unbelievable, but billionaires now pay a lower effective tax rate than the average working person in this country. Do you believe that? And profitable corporations like Amazon did not pay a nickel of federal income taxes last year while they're owned by the largest, the wealthiest person in America. When Donald Trump was a candidate for president, 
He promised the American people that the wealthy would not benefit at all under his tax plan. We all remember that. Not the wealthy will not benefit. In fact, only the middle class and working families would benefit from his tax plan. He lied. As President Trump, as president, Trump signed a tax bill that provides 83% of all benefits over a 10-year period to the top 1%. Donald Trump said he would protect manufacturing jobs in states like Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, Indiana, and Pennsylvania. He lied. Since Trump has been in office, over 170,000 American jobs have been shipped overseas. We are now in a manufacturing recession. And the NAFTA 2.0 deal that he recently signed will not prevent a single corporation from shutting down factories in the United States and moving them to Mexico, where workers are paid less than $2 an hour. We can and will do much better than a Trump-negotiated trade deal. No, President Trump, this is not the strongest economy we've ever had when 87 million Americans are uninsured or underinsured, and millions of Americans have lost their health insurance, President Trump, since you have been in office. This is not a booming economy when the pharmaceutical industry continues to rip off the American people by charging us the highest prices in the world by far for prescription drugs, and when one out of five Americans can't afford the medicine their doctors prescribe. Can you imagine that? People go to the doctor, they are sick, and they can't even afford to, to fill the prescriptions their doctors prescribe. In his remarks tonight, Donald Trump talked about the need for America to have the, quote, most affordable, innovative, and high-quality healthcare system on Earth. He continued, we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions, end quote. Really? <laughs> How gullible do you think the American people are? This is the same president who came one vote away from throwing 32 million Americans off the health care they have and ending the Affordable Care Act's protection for pre-existing conditions, conditions. This is also the president who, who in his last budget proposed a $1.4 trillion in cuts to Medicaid and $845 billion in cuts to Medicare. This is not a booming economy when half of older Americans have no retirement savings and no idea how they will ever be able to retire with any shred of dignity. Now, as important as it is to respond to some of what President Trump said tonight, it is equally important to discuss what Trump refused to talk about. In the year 2020, how can a President of the United States give a State of the Union speech and not mention climate change. How do you give a speech, State of the Union speech, and not mention climate change when the leading scientists of the world tell us that climate change is the greatest existential threat facing humanity, and that they, as scientists, have actually underestimated the speed and the severity in which climate change is wreaking havoc 
on our country and the entire world. I did not hear President Trump say one word about what it means when Australia is now on fire because of severe drought and about the unprecedented level of flooding and extreme weather disturbances that we are experiencing. And he failed to talk about how many American communities could be underwater in the next century as a result of rising sea levels. By ignoring and, in fact, exacerbating the crisis of climate change, President Trump is turning his back on the children of America and on future generations and dooming them to live in a planet increasingly unhealthy and uninhabitable. It is truly sad that we have a President of the United States who lacks the courage to stand up to his billionaire friends in the fossil fuel industry. Tonight, I didn't hear Donald Trump say one word about gun violence or the epidemic of mass shootings that we have experienced in recent years. Together, the American people want strong policies. Now, if I, if I might, let me share a little bit of good news with you. <laughs> And that is that after traveling around this country, I am more confident than ever that the American people want a government that is based on the principles of justice and compassion, not greed and corruption. Instead of throwing 32 million Americans off of their health insurance, as Trump wants to do by repealing, repealing the Affordable Care Act, the American people understand that health care is a human right and not a privilege. And that we must expand Medicare to cover every man, woman, and child in this country through a Medicare for all single-payer program. Now, Donald Trump may not like government health care, but Medicare is the most popular health insurance program in this country, and the time is long overdue for expanding it to cover all of our people. Tonight, uh, President Trump talked about his desire to preserve Social Security. Hmm. Funny, that's not what he said last month when he was in Davos with his billionaire friends and talked about the need to cut back on entitlement programs. So we say to the president, instead of trying to cut Social Security, we must expand Social Security benefits. so that every senior citizen in this country can live with the dignity they deserve and every American with a disability can live with the security they need. Instead of more tax breaks for billionaires and Wall Street executives, 
we are going to raise the minimum wage to a living wage, $15 an hour. We are going to provide equal pay for equal work. And we are going to make it easier for workers to join unions. Instead of giving massive tax breaks and subsidies to the fossil fuel industry, as Trump is doing, we are going to enact a tax on Wall Street speculators so that we can make public colleges and universities tuition-free and cancel all student debt in America. Instead, instead of giving corporate welfare to large companies that are shipping our jobs overseas, we're going to stop providing lucrative federal contracts to corporations that are outsourcing American jobs to low-wage countries. Instead of demonizing the undocumented, we are going to pass comprehensive immigration reform and a path toward citizenship for the undocumented. And on day one, we are going to restore the legal status of the 1.8 million young people eligible for the DACA program. And in the richest country in the history of the world, we must not continue having more people in jail than any other country on Earth because of a broken and racist criminal justice system. We need to invest in our young people, in jobs and education, not more jails and incarceration. And when we talk about criminal justice reform, we need to end the so-called war on drugs and legalize marijuana in every state in this country. Yes, tonight we have heard Donald Trump talk about deregulation and getting government off the backs of the American people. But if Trump believes that we have to get government off the backs of the American people, then he must understand, and his colleagues and friends must understand, that it is women who must control their own bodies, not the government. If we are serious about transforming our country, if we are serious about rebuilding the middle class, if we are serious about economic, racial, social, and environmental justice, we must end the divisiveness that Donald Trump is fomenting.
We must bring our people together, black and white, Latino, Native American, Asian American, gay and straight, and create a government based on the principles of justice. This is an unprecedented moment in American history. Let us go forward together. Thank you all very much. Thank you.